Hey guys, you're watching Phone Arena's in-depth video review of the Nokia X2, which is available right now through T-Mobile's prepaid lineup for $79.99. It's a basic Series 40 handset that's primarily focused on the messaging aspects. For $80, you really can't knock on the X2's design, just because it's kind of reminiscent of some Blackberries out there thanks to its portrait-style QWERTY form factor. It's constructed out of plastic all around and available in different colors. The one we have here is in like a gunmetal type finish. Um, it's very lightweight in the hand and it's normal size. And again, just uh, just because it's a no contract device, we're pretty happy with the overall construction and look of this handset. Turning it on, we're greeted to a 2.4 inch QVGA display, so that's 320 by 240 pixels, and support for 262,000 colors. So it's not the highest thing out there, uh, it should do for most people, but the colors would look a little bit on the washed outside and does suffer from some poor viewing angles. Beneath the display, we have some dedicated buttons here, the, uh, the soft keys and also send end ones. You also have a nice size D-pad for navigation. We're content with the response they offer, but we're equally happy with the physical keyboard here, the portrait style, as you could tell. Um, although it's, it is kind of cramped, they're kind of rounded towards the middle, so you do have a distinguishable feel with your fingers. And for overall, we find a typing experience to be more than adequate. On the left side of the phone, you have the micro SD card slot and also the micro USB port hidden behind this plastic flap. It's kind of difficult to remove. With the micro USB port, it only supplies data connection. If you need power, you got to connect it with the with the proprietary port up here. And you also have the 3.5mm headset jack on top as well. And finally, in the back, we're greeted to the 0.3 megapixel VGA camera. We have the uh, speakerphone grill right there. Removing the back cover, you got to pry it off from the bottom here. Once you got it off, you have access to the battery and also the SIM card slot. With the Series 40 handset, there's just a limited amount of personalization found with it. Obviously, you could change the uh, themes to get a different look, but with the home screen, you have some quick functions such as your favorite contacts, jumping into your social networking accounts, and you also have this carousel to launch different apps such as the, the web browser, the camera, and music player. If you jump into the main menu, it's laid in typical grid-like fashion. It's pretty simple and straightforward. We did notice some instances of slowdown lag uh, when just running different items. Heavy text messengers will appreciate the Nokia X2 thanks to its fantastic clicky keyboard and typing up stuff. But in addition to that, you could always insert different objects such as photos and even recordings to make an MMS. As for productivity, the X2 brings along the Nokia email service, so allowed us to set up our Gmail account by putting our email address and password. It might not be as intuitive as a smartphone, but at least you have that functionality on board. With Nokia Communities, it's your one-stop shop for all your social networking needs. We managed to set up our Facebook and Twitter accounts on here, and it does the usual stuff such as aggregating content, and we're just happy to see that it offers a little bit of the functionality that you expect out of any other application out there. Unfortunately, the web browsing experience is not all that great with the Nokia X2, primarily because for starters, it is an edge-only device, so it will take some time to load up pages here. Um, as you can tell, it tries to render it just like you see on a desktop, but we do notice some slowdown lag when you're just navigating or scrolling. On top of that, it is limited on memory, so sometimes we get the error of saying that it's memory full, and it doesn't display all the pictures. Boasting a generic music player, it's very light in terms of presentation, but it gives you stuff like the track information, even on-screen controls. As far as the audio quality from the speaker, it is definitely blasting at the loudest volume setting, but it is screechy at the same time, so it's a little bit irritating to the ear. Luckily though, there are some equalizer settings to help fine-tune the uh, quality of the audio uh, when you're playing respective genres of music. Of course, you could watch videos on the Nokia X2, but only low quality ones like the one we have here, which is encoded MPEG-4 320x240 resolution. Um, it is a little bit pixelated and grainy, but luckily it does move it at a decent frame to make it a little bit better in your eyes. On top of that, you could also play it in full screen mode just to make it a little bit more conducive to your needs. Additionally, video recording is not all that inviting with the Nokia X2 just because it has a maximum shooting resolution of 320 by 240 pixels, so that it's very slim in terms of uh, details. On top of that, voice audio recording is on the muffled side as well. Sadly, calling quality is a complete miss with the handset just because on our end line through the earpiece, it just produces an abundant amount of static noise in the background which makes, which muddies down the overall conversation we're having with someone. And on top of that, it just makes for a difficult time in comprehending every single word. On the other hand, there are callers did say they had a little bit better time on their end seeing that our voice were a little bit more manageable and wasn't distorted as much. However, when we switched to using the speakerphone, it did turn, it did make voices sound muffled in tone. Interestingly enough, the best thing going for the handset is its phenomenal battery life. In fact, we managed to get out 10 half hours of continuous talk time in a single charge before it completely died, where the manufacturer has it rated for 4.5 hours of talk time. 
Furthermore, the exterior seems to retain a solid connection to the network just because during our time using it, we didn't have any drop calls or any fluctuations in signal strength. Granted that it might not hit high marks in specific key aspects such as calling quality, for $80, no contract, the uh, Nokia X2 should be a so decent solution for most people out there, especially when it does offer some basic functions such as taking photos, and also you have social networking and email integration with the platform. We do like it as a messaging device solely just because of the uh, fantastic keyboard, it's very clicky and responsive, and on top of that, um, it's not going to cost you too much out of your pocket. So if you'd like to learn more about the Nokia X2 or for all the latest cell phone reviews, news, specs, and information, you can check us out phonerena.com